Good morning everyone, uh, this is Sri Ram Bamakanti. I will be covering overview of SOC and design flow in this session today. Let me give a brief about myself. I did masters in University of Hyderabad in electronics and I joined Qualcore Logic Limited in Hyderabad as a design engineer and then I moved on to AMD ATI which was into mobile and the client SOC design. After AMD I joined Intel and currently I am managing a design team in Hyderabad. So, now we will be covering the SOC conceptual diagram. This is a logical view. You can see that on the top side we have various processing units and we have various interconnecting blocks which are represented as M0, M1, M2 and H0, H1, H2 and the L0, L1, L2 blocks. This we are calling interconnect blocks because they are connecting various IPs. Now, if you see that uh, in a typical uh, system, we need a CPU uh, which is required to go as high as let us say 3 gigahertz in terms of the performance and a GPU might operate at 1 gigahertz and IPU and others might be operating at different lower frequencies. Uh, at the same time, you still have the PCIe or SATA and all other low frequency IPs like I2C which are connected. Now, you see that uh, if we have to uh, operate this particular entire interconnect logic at a uh, high performance because of CPU, then it causes significant power increase. And also, if we uh, need to scale this particular uh, design and uh, converge this design, it becomes very difficult. Now, so with this kind of a structure in place, which is a scalable, we can partition this into three levels of performance. The one that is connecting to the high processing IPs can operate at a very high frequency to support the CPU, GPU requirements. Then a middle level where it can operate at a medium frequency of 500 megahertz which it interconnects different IOs. And then the lowest hierarchy here in the interconnect can connect to the further slow frequency peripherals. It can be let us say around 250 megahertz. Now, with this kind of uh, requirement, uh, there is a necessity we are seeing for the this interconnect block to be scalable and configurable such that we can manage this kind of uh, topology. And at the same time, we need for example, if only CPU has to perform a high frequency operation, we can put it on a separate domain and scale it and rest of the voltage domains uh, can be maintained normal. So, in this kind of uh, uh, system, you can see that uh, a separate voltage rail is associated with the CPU or GPU or the high performance fabric and rest of the system. And also, so the key things that we need that we see from this kind of system is you have the uh, multiple clock domains which are coming from different sources and they all may not be synchronized and you have different voltage domains to tune the system as per the uh, performance requirement. So, when you have multiple clock domains in the system and because they come from different sources, all of them may not be synchronous, they may not be edge aligned and when you are taking the signals from one domain to other domain, they can create issues and metastability issues and the system can malfunction. So, there are various design techniques to handle those kind of issues and a, a simple two stage synchronizer based on the nature of the signal that you want to synchronize or the toggle synchronization kind of uh, techniques or a handshake synchronization or enable based synchronization or an asynchronous FIFO when you are exchanging the bulk of uh, data across these two domains. In addition, we also have dynamic clock gating logic wherein you can see here there is an incoming free running clock and there is a signal which in which is indicating the logic is busy or idle. So, typically when this signal is high it indicates it is busy and it needs a clock when this signal is low it indicates it is idle and hence it can get the clock. So, we will have a circuitry and this kind of dynamic clock gating when we say dynamic while the active uh, performance or the active state of the system is going on when the workloads are executed, 
there can be intermediate ideal states in the workload which are utilized to uh, reduce the dynamic power. So, when we are having multiple voltage domains, number one we need a different type of uh, uh, cells in our library which are which we are mentioning it here special cells. So, essentially you need a capability to power gate the domain where you can see a switch on the uh, bottom side here which is connected uh, to a power gated domain such that through a sleep control from the on logic you can always turn on or turn off the uh, domain. And then when you are uh, transitioning any signals from any off domain to any on domain, we need a logic like the isolation which will ensure that the uh, signals going into the on domain are in a defined and determined state. And this is achieved through generation of the isolation controls from the active logic. And this is all done during the sequencing of these power states and domains. And when you are having different voltage rails which can vary to uh, different uh, ranges, you need a level shifter on those signals going from uh, one level to the other level. And hence the L level shifters are present and enabled level shifter are also present in the library to serve this purpose. And we are also having a retention flops, there can be a requirement where the rest of the logic in the uh, IP or the system or the partition can be uh, uh, turned off, but you want to quickly resume back to the known state and that is where your retention flop scheme can help. So, the power management ACPA advanced configuration and power interface is an industry standard interface which is aimed at uh, providing the definitions for various power states, system power states which can be OS directed. So, on the left side here you see that uh, there are defined systems in terms of the G 3 which is mechanical off when it is when your system is off, but your background uh, RTC power is running to maintain the date and time. And then you have the Z 0 which is a normal uh, working state and in this the system state as 0 is called as the active state. So, and in the active state there can be further low power uh, states based on the uh, system capability. And G 1 is a sleeping sleep state basically it supports um, various flavors of sleep state S 2, S 3 and uh, S 4, wherein S, S 2 CPU is off and cache uh, is lost here. S 3 is where it is a called as a standby and you are suspending the system state to RAM and it helps when you are resuming this will be faster and S 4 is hibernate or suspend to disk in it, it will take slightly longer time to resume from this state. And S y is the shutdown state uh, basically the content is lost and full reboot is required from this state. Parallelly the computer uh, the, the processor states have also evolved which are represented like uh, C star states here C states. So, they also have an equivalent operating state uh, C 0, C 1 is a halt state where the processor is not executing the instructions, but when there is a requirement it can return fast to the execution. C 3 is the, uh, the stop clock state and then C, C, C 2 is the stop clock state here and C 3 is the sleep state for the processor. In this case processor does not uh, keep the cache coherency, but maintains the other state of the system. Similarly, multiple devices in the uh, system uh, have their own uh, device states, basically they can be specified as D 0 is operating state, D 1, D 2 can be various other low power states as defined by the respective devices and D 3 hot where the power is not fully removed, but uh, is accessible to the the IP is accessible to the software or any wake event can quickly resume this IP back to normal state, but upon returning to the normal state full initialization is required. And D 3 cold is power is fully removed, uh, there cannot be uh, any uh, context that is uh, preserved and uh, OS must fully reinitialize this particular device when bringing it back to the normal state.
So, this uh, flow diagram covers the dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. Uh, this implies that while the system is active uh, and when the system is in the idle states for a longer time, you can reduce initially the uh, frequency to reduce the power and if it is further uh, idle in the uh, lo longer time, you can actually scale down the voltage and bring it down to a optimal power state. So, always when you are moving from the active state, which is the uh, full functional state at a required nominal voltage and the frequency, when you want to scale down a voltage, you must always first scale down the frequency and then scale down the voltage and come to a low power uh, state. So, basically this entire sequence uh, requires uh, several cycles. Once the, the, the frequency scale down does not happen abruptly, it will be ramped down gradually and then the voltage transition from the nominal to a lower state also happens in a gradual fashion. When from the low power state, if you want to bring back the come to active state at a nominal frequency, you have to first scale up the voltage and which again takes a certain uh, finite time and after which you have to scale up the frequency so, so as to operate uh, in that condition and re return back to the active state. Even during the scale up, it will be a gradual ramp. So, this gradual ramp up or ramp down is ensured so that there is no current surge and if there is a current surge, there will be di, dt kind of problem which will resulting in malfunction of a device. So, these are the techniques that help us to maintain the uh, power efficiency for a given active scenarios. So, in summary, uh, the key design requirements for an SOC would be number one to achieve the feature set and functionality uh, defined as per the uh, product requirement, achieve the optimal area in a given uh, form factor and also need to support the uh, defined voltage ranges, temperature ranges and frequency range of operation that is uh, required for the uh, use cases and uh, it has to have the good efficiency with respect to performance per watt where in an active scenario there should be an optimal power consumption. And uh, various power delivery components like uh, voltage integrated voltage regulators or an LDOs help us to achieve the faster uh, frequency or voltage scaling uh, steps. Multi clock domains are a necessity and hence the corresponding synchronization techniques and multi voltage domains and corresponding low power design techniques are to be employed. As we see that uh, the interconnect is a, a, a big logic that is connecting all the IPs in the system, it is very important to have a scalable interconnect so that you can easily add on the nodes as and when needed and also you can uh, maintain different hierarchy based on the performance and that leads to the overall and efficient interconnect. So, these interconnects can be intraday and interday and required to be scalable. So, one of the critical uh, feature of the SOC design is design for reuse which implies that any building block which is already designed which meets our functionality should be integrated into the design so that the lot of development cycle is reduced and also we leverage the quality of the readily available IP in our designs. These reuse building blocks can be an IP or a sub IP or a, a, a small units or a glue logic which can be integrated. And as discussed, we need to have the uh, secure way of uh, installing the uh, firmware and a secure boot and initialization capability and also the access privilege. Uh, to do a data protection schemes on the SOC. So, power management uh, logic which actually caters to dynamically transitioning the system power states which are OS coordinated as well as the uh, controls to turn on or turn off the power domains when we move from one state to the other is also required on the SOC. There are various uh, thermal management logic like uh, adding a temperature sensor, putting a thermal limit and generating a scheme to 
throttle the performance to reduce the uh, temperature or to indicate a trip point when the max thermal uh, temperature is uh, reached to shut down the system. Reliability is another area where we expect the system to operate consistently with the desired functionality for a longer time. There are certain design uh, requirements and checks to be done. Functional safety are the new requirements on the SOCs which are uh, going into either robotics or automobile where we expect the system to detect any errors up front and uh, quickly resume to a safe state. So, design for test logic provides the capability to identify any manufacturing uh, defects in the design. So, design for uh, debug is the uh, hardware and software debug capability is a critical feature, where in case of a failure in the post silicon, we should be able to check certain internal signals or we should be able to get certain kind of traces to understand the sequence of execution and uh, analyze based on which where the error is happening. And this also helps when you are having a software being run first time on the silicon and uh, you want to understand where the issue is, whether it is between hardware or software, we should have all these debug capabilities to root cause. Thank you.